just did the install on the b and turnover ball. Remember, I went with the Econo box, and that just contained what you pretty much see here and the thing underneath. And I made my own mounting brackets. Uh, I just am on a budget. I have more time than money. So it took me about two days to do this complete install, maybe 16 hours, and I have good tools. I have chop saws, plasma cutter, welder. If you don't have any of that stuff, you'd probably be better off buying their kit. And their kit also says it'll haul up to 30,000 pounds. Now, if you're concerned about the weight issue, I recommend you just buy their kit. But every time I look at their kits that are online, they disappear fast. And I am out of time, out of patience. We got to get moved. So I built my own setup. So in this video, I show you how I did that. But if you think your liability, there's, I'm just telling you, I don't know if this thing will hold 30,000 pounds or not. I'm just letting you know right now, before you get even too buried into my video, that I, I can't guarantee how much weight this thing will hold, but uh, I'm pretty confident in my work. Okay, next up on towing mode is this BMW turnover ball hitch. Now I went the cheap route and just got the, the middle section. I'll build my own mounting brackets. Uh, I'm on the, gotta keep the budget down. I got plenty of steel as you can see there. We got tons of plate and lots of angle iron over underneath that plywood. Good heavy duty angle and heavy duty plate. So now this is what comes in the Econo box of BMW turnover ball. You get your release handle, you get your turnover ball, you get your safety chain key bolts, and the big old expensive piece, I'm sure, the part that goes underneath the bed. And we're going to uh, install this in the middle of the bed. Hey, first thing I'm going to do is take the shocks off because I'm replacing them anyways because they're in the way of being able to work up there. So I'm going to just spray some WD on the bolts and stuff and uh, take those off and get them out of the way. Also going to remove the rear spare tire, I mean, spare tire so it's out of the way. Try to give me a lot of room to work up there. Now I got my tape pretty close to center and then I just took a keel or a big crayon or something and marked down the edge like this. And then you can take your ruler, find center that way, and then drop down and put your mark, your Sharpie or whatever, right here, and then center this way. I pretty much found center and we'll get it close. Now it's my first generation Dodge. The wheel well, this is center of the axle, and it's pretty much right in line with the pocket here in the bed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find center at the top there and over there on that side and take a frame and square and just put it in the bottom of the bed, touch it up there like that, down there, and then mark it down there. That should be the center of your bed and the axle, center of your axle. Now I'll just uh, drill my pilot hole first in the center of that cross there.
supposed to deburr that from underneath, I'll use a round file to clean that out. I'll just push all this stuff down in the bottom on the floor. Next in line is cleaning that up. Okay, next, I'm going to pre-drill these uh, chain, safety chain holders and top the bed first. But uh, being how this is the side for the lever to pull to release the pan, uh, I'm going to, and the holes are offset from the center of this hole, I'm going to end over end it this way, like this, drop it in my hole there, and I'm going to measure from the back of my bed to this, and center this up better and then drill my safety chain holes that way. When I put this on the bottom side, I can put some temporary bolts to hold this to the bottom of the bed uh, when I start putting these side brackets on. Okay, my truck is 41 and 3 8 uh, to the back side to the end of the bed, so that's where I'm going to go. I'll just stand on this thing and drill some holes. Flip this back over there. Okay, you can see I got my bolts dropped through the top of the bed. I'm going to temporarily bolt this thing up in there. I'm going to try to manhandle it by myself. It weighs about 40 50 pounds, so it's going to be tough. But uh, just going to temporarily bolt it up there. Oh, baby, help me, help me, help me. Okay, got the bolts in temporary where the safety chains go to help hold that in place while I do the brackets above the frame now. Take had to loosen the the brake line here. When I did, yep, it busted. I mean I didn't barely move it. I'm glad it broke now. I sure wouldn't have wanted to lose brakes pulling that gooseneck with a backhoe on the back of it. So, good Lord's watching out for me. So we got to make a new brake line. Okay, next I got to remove this piece of frame bracket here, so I can work in there. And then uh, we'll put it back when we're done. Holds the shocks and everything, so it's got to go back. But right now it's in the way, and it's just bolted in there. Okay, and once we got this bracket moved. To hold the spare tire and the shocks and everything on. Got all kinds of room to see up there, but now I got to take that thing back down, that uh, hitch, and I got to jack my bed up. So I got to take the bolts out of the out of the bed and jack her up. Probably use four by four blocks and hold it up so we can slip things in and out. But uh, yep, that's got to come back out. I just put it up in there to get measurements and see if it's gonna what I need to do and we got plans so on to the next phase okay here's our brackets brought one I was able to leave a little meat on the rear one I wasn't but it's gonna be solid against the frame and and the bed so Normally I would sandblast this with my sandblasting stuff, but it's all in Wyoming right now. So we're just going to take a wire wheel and buff it out and then paint them. Get them painted and let them sit out in the sun while I do other things so they'll be dry and ready when I'm ready to put it together. Okay, next we had to find center. This uh, B&D unit is 29 and a half, so that's 14 and 3 quarters to the center. My brackets are 44, so 22 to the center. And I have it rested on a piece of plywood that I drilled a hole in so it sits flat. Basically, it acts like the bed upside down right now. So I'm going to mark these holes with the Sharpie inside both ways and then drill them on my drill press over there. And uh, 
slip these. I got my bed jacked up inch and a half. I got some little wood blocks underneath the front and the back. So it's up an inch and a half. I'll be able to slide these uh, pieces of angle up in there a lot easier. And then I'll bolt this back in temporary to the bed again. And uh, bolt these up to it next after that. Now because I'm having angle iron going to go flat against this, I have to grind it down flush with this on both ends and on both sides. So I got to flatten those out so the angle will fit flat against this. Okay, I'm using carriage bolts for up against the bed. So this is, uh, put. I got it in one of the ribs but I don't want a bolt pushing up on the bed and I'm just going to put a spot weld on a couple spot welds on each one now so it'll hold it in place I had to drill a 5 8 hole versus a 9 16 hole now well, these are ready to go in just welded the carriage bolts on top like I said I was going to paint them black when I got done the silver was just to help make marks and lines and whatnot but uh can use this three by three by quarter inch uh, for the other part of the bracket and that's next on the list okay I got it up in place it's just finger tight right now as you can see this is double layers of quarter inch plate band all up so I had to put two inch on this side and I put inch and a half on the front side it's only the one piece plus my angle so my ink this is like three quarters of an inch thick here total and this is a half half inch thick so it's just temporary until I let the bed back down once I let the bed back down uh, we'll be working on the outside of the frame next okay to help find the, where this bolt is coming down out of the bracket here remember I had to put carriage bolts up at the top of here so it'll have clearance and uh, a bolt would have probably left a dent in the top of my bed uh, I'm kind of concerned about that but uh, I just took some paint touched it on the bottom here and then put a piece of tape on here and then bumped it and now I can kind of get the center of that Okay, this part of the frame has a dent in it. It goes, got a bump, and it goes flat the rest of the way. And I put this uh, quarter inch shim underneath before I tighten these up. The reason I tighten these up now is because I'm going to go on the other side of the frame and drill the holes uh, where I want this bracket to go. And then after I do that, I'm going to take my shim and put it in the two holes. It's for the cross brace. I'm just going to utilize the same holes and uh, uh, weld this and redrill the holes again. I'll show you that when we get to that point. Okay, as you can see, this is where the bracket goes that holds the shocks and a few other things. I got the same size, 3 8 bit. I'm just basically going to line them up just marking the hole there's another one up by the fuel tank I'm gonna get that one too for the front one now these holes will have to be bored out to the 9 16 holes to take the half inch uh, bolt and uh, I'll have to do the same to the brackets we basically fingerprinted or printed where we want to drill our holes. And I'm going to do that on the drill press. Okay, you can see my print holes. I just touched with my 3 8 bit in those 3 8 holes. 
Now I'm going to do pilot holes and then my 9 16 holes. And then on the truck, I'm going to go bore them out to uh, 9 16 so they'll accommodate these big bolts. Now before I go bolt this back in, I still have to bore the holes out there, but I'm going to take and weld this right here and uh, just tack it here and there and then re-drill them holes because I need to shim it out because of the frame. So we're going to tack that on next and then re-drill them holes out, paint her up black and install it. Well here's these two outside frame brackets. I had to weld those shims on uh, to help take up the space in between the frame where it doesn't uh, flatten out so now it'll fold up nice and solid okay see how that bracket above there is riding tight against the bed it's tight against the bed all the way out to here uh, so I hope this will help got these bolts in on this side uh, everything's all locked down now okay you can see the brackets I put in remember I did most of this upside down on a piece of plywood so it'll be all flat against the bed I just put my lever down here I didn't want to drill holes through my frame and all that stuff so you just basically got to do it down here but I'd rather do it down here than somebody else come helping themselves to my ball. So anyways, I uh, had to relocate this thing from up there because it was in the way riding right there. And I had to shorten the line. My other line broke on me. I don't know if you remember that, but I wish I would have bent this up, but I would have been in the way of other stuff. But anyways, someday I'll probably put a new one on, bend it up, but I just... Put another one in for now. We put wheel spacers, inch and a half wheel spacers on. Hopefully to widen the stance a little bit. Now I've been driving it and it does seem to improve the stability of the truck along with the uh, skyjacker stuff up front. But uh, anyways, hope this will help me in my towing when we move.